Miss Percival, you say for the past 31 years your father has never been willing to accept you as his biological daughter. Right, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Hanson, you claim you did not sleep with Miss Percival's mother at the time she was conceived, and there is no way she is your daughter. That's right, Your Honor. She's not my daughter. Additionally, there is yet another young woman waiting outside of the courtroom claiming Mr. Hanson is her father. She will be joining us shortly, accompanied by her mother. So, mm -hmm. Ms. Percival, yes, please, um, share with the court mm -hmm. why you feel Mr. Hansen has rejected you. I feel that he has rejected me since, well, my whole life I've grown up not knowing who my father was, knowing that my sister, who was a, also through my mother, who is Michael's daughter, he accepted her when she was a baby, but denied me the whole entire time. Mm. So I grew up my whole entire life not knowing who my father was because he refused to take a DNA test. Mr. Hansen, what I'm trying to understand is you have one child yes. with her mother. Why is it you deny her? So I was much? married with another woman at the time. There's no way. Me and the other woman that I was in a relationship with was having a baby. And I don't cheat. So, Ms. Merchant, you were married to Mr. Hansen. Yes. At the time <laughs> that Miss Percival was conceived. Yes, I knew that she was born. I knew she was his when she was born. You did? Yes, what? I did. No, that's a yes, lie. Yes, I did. I was with you. How could I be with and you? And her. No, I was not. <laughs> yeah, you no, were. No, I wasn't. So, no way. Ms. Viapondo just stated that she knew you existed. Yes. And knew he was running back and forth to you. And now you're stating to this court that you knew she existed yes. and that he was running back and forth. Yeah, that's how these <laughs> girls are 28 days apart. No, no, that's a lie. So you that's knew he was cheating on you? I oh, never yeah. once cheated on her. Never. Oh. No, you <laughs> cheated on robot. me. So, Mr. Hansen... <laughs> yes, Your Honor. You're also denying that Miss Hansen is your daughter. 50-50 chance. Yeah, no, no, my, no, no. My wife he... cheated on me while we were married with your my Honor. older brother. Mr. Fisher, you claim you made the biggest mistake of your life by signing the birth certificate for two-month-old Sophia. You say your fiancé dropped a bomb on you just one month ago and admitted you may not be her father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Doyle, you admit to making the biggest mistake of your life by cheating on Mr. Fisher. But stand in court hoping and praying he is Sophia's father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And then, Ms. Doyle, how do we end up here? What happened? Um, one of his family members, I was on vacation with one of his family members in Florida, and another one of his family members that he was with at the time had texted me, and he said, Trey's cheating on you, which we call him Trey, but his name is John. So, me, I was hurt. And so I went to be by myself at the pool area where I was at at the time, and a guy walked up to me. And he's like, well, you look like you need somebody to talk to. Do you want to go to my camper and talk? So, <laughs> so I go back to his camper with him, and we talked about it, and then one thing led to another. We were, he kissed me, and then we had sex. Unprotected sex? Yes, Your Honor. Did you ever find out if Mr. Fisher was actually cheating that time? Yes, Your Honor. Me and him talked about it, and the family member admitted that it was a lie, that he did not cheat on me. So the family member Jeez. sent a text and lied? Yes, Your Honor. And you went and had revenge sex? Yes, Your Honor. And the whole time it was a lie? Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Fisher, as you stand here, I can see how difficult it is to hear your fiancé describe the night she had sex with another person. And you knew nothing about this until after Sophia was born. Yes, Your Honor. Miss Casey, you say that for more than 25 years, your mother has told you that a deceased man who is listed on your birth certificate is your biological father. Yes, Your Honor. Now another man, Mr. Edwards, is claiming he 
is your biological father. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Ewing, you say you are sure Mr. Edwards is not your daughter's father. In fact, you say you are 100% certain that a man named Otis Hawkins, who you claim was shot and killed, is in fact your daughter's biological father. Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Edwards, you claim that you and Ms. Ewing were still in a sexual relationship at the time her daughter was conceived and hope to prove that you are indeed Miss Casey's biological father. Yes, Your Honor. You've been told for over 25 years that Otis Hawkins, the man you believe to be your father, was dead. Yes, ma'am. But he's alive. <laughs> and we found him for you. Jerome, please escort oh my Mr. Hawkins. God into the courtroom. Come here, Miss Condon. You need to sit down? You okay? Let me go up to the witness stand. There. Oh, my God. Miss Condon, there's your dad! There's your dad! Wait. No, no, no. Oh, my God, that is me. Let me see. Oh, I got That's this picture. You, my Anna. sister lost it. I have this picture. Look at you, baby. In the case of Casey versus Ewing Edwards Hawkins pertaining to whether Mr. Edwards is the father of Ms. Casey, Mr. Edwards, you are not her father. In the case of Casey versus Ewing Edwards Hawkins, pertaining to whether Mr. Hawkins is the father of Ms. Casey, Mr. Hawkins, you are not <gasps> her father. <laughs> the Connor, in my heart, you steal my child. I know you did. Ms. Ewing, do you know who her father is? Yeah, I do. And it's? His brother. <laughs> Mr. Hawkins' brother? Whoa. Yes. <laughs> Didn't see that coming. <sighs> Mr. Cohen, you say your wife brought another man into your home and had sex with him under your roof. Yes, Your you Honor. claim your trust has been shattered and you're enduring the ultimate betrayal of not knowing whether or not Kyrie is your son. Today's DNA results will determine the fate of your marriage. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. You took this guy, Jew met at community service, back to your marital home that you shared with your husband? My and husband had was cheating, too. So, to be fair, I was getting him back. That's all that was. He was cheating. And he made... He, my husband's made me feel so low. Like, he's chosen females over me plenty of times. So, it was my time to get back at him. So, I was just doing what I wanted to do. Was the sex unprotected? With who? With the community service oh. guy. <laughs> yes. Mr. Pitchford Kendricks, you opened your case to prove that you are the biological father of the defendant's two-month-old son, Javier. You claim she is denying paternity only because she wants to be with another man and needs him to be the father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Saavedra, you admit you allowed two men into your bed at the same time, but you are convinced that Mr. Pitchford Kendricks is not Javier's biological father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Pitchford Kendricks, you say proving paternity is extremely important to you. Yes, Your Honor. But, Ms. Saavedra, you say, unfortunately, Mr. Kendricks, you don't believe he's the biological father? 
No, Your Honor, I do not. It started like this. Me and Greg met each other through, he was dating a roommate of mine. And he came over one day. We did end up hitting it off, and we was cool. Um, ended up having sex. Oh. <laughs> OK, that's Three's Company, right? <laughs> Y'all too young to know that show. Speaking of Three's Company, when me and the man that I believe is Javier's father, Maurice, was getting rocky, we decided to include Greg in our mix and try and spice things up. Oh, so how often was that happening? It happened... Off and on for, like, 10 years. What? It's before... It's it before, wasn't 10 years. It's before... It's before... <laughs> it's, it happened like this, Your Honor. I've been knowing her 10 years. After I, after I got her and we became friends, you know, I was still kind of talking to her friend. You know what I'm saying? So oh, you after, still with the friend? Yeah. Right. After that, after that, you know, she I hooked her up. She asked me, did I know anybody else? You know what I'm saying? That she could hook up with. So, so who call, did you hook her up with? Uh, well, a half cousin of mine. A half cousin? Yeah, it's my he my cousin's cousin. So, <laughs> so I hooked them up. So wait a minute. You were dating a woman. You mm -hmm. ended up sleeping with her roommate. Then you developed a friendship with that roommate, and then she asked you to introduce her to somebody, mm -hmm. so you introduced her to your cousin. Yes, ma'am. But then... Yes, Your Honor. Her and your cousin invited you into their bed to have a threesome when their relationship needed spicing up. Yeah, like that. But she used to call me and confide in me to, like, after I hooked them up as friends and stuff, and they got it on, you know, and when they getting, have their little disputes or whatever, he be cheating and all that, she called me crying and stuff. And, you know, I had to go over there and kind of help her cheer up and stuff, you know. <laughs> Ms. Alston, you've come to court to prove to the defendant, Mr. Holmes, whom you first met at the age of 15, that you are his biological daughter. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Holmes, you say there's no way she's your child, and today the DNA will prove your case. You say her biological father is David Alston, the man who is on her birth certificate and paid child support for her. So, Ms. Alston, tell us how you first found out the defendant might be your father. Um, well, Mr. Alston and my mom were married. So, um, as a child, it all started there. I grew up at home with my mom, with my seven siblings. So, um, one summer, I was going outside to play, and my mom was outside talking to a guy, and when I walked up, he, she was like, he was like, tell her, tell her. And she looked at me and said, this is your uncle, this is your dad's brother. So, um, I proceeded to meet the family, which is my younger brother, my grandmother, aunts and uncles, and they embraced me like if they knew me from day one. So I have always assumed that Mr. Austin was my dad because his name was on my birth certificate. But at 15, she told me that Mr. Holmes can be my dad. He's always been a father figure to me since from day one, with, even with the doubt. Mr. Holmes, you don't believe she's your biological child? No, I don't, Your Honor. Why? Explain to the court. Because Miss Austin's mother, back in the day, she was like fast. Mm -hmm. And because I met her at at, a, at the school bus stop, she was in high school, and two days later after I met her, I had sex with her. I called her again uh, a couple of days later, asked her to come back, and we had sex again. So it was kind of like a booty call. It has been determined by this court, Mr. Holmes, you are not Ms. Alston's father. Mr. Alston, you are not Ms. Alston's what? father. Why is she doing that? Lord Hammers. This is still my grandbaby. Oh, my, oh, my God. <laughs> Sit her down, man. Oh, my God. Sit down, oh, Miss. Oh, wow. This, oh, my God. I'm so sorry, Miss Austin. 
But you still, you know, you still got us, don't you? That's some other fault. <laughs> Ain't nothing changing. <laughs> this entire courtroom is in shock. Are you all right, Mr. Alston? You truly believe that was your biological yeah. child? Signed the birth certificate. Explain why you opened your case today. I opened my case today because I was with D'Amico for five years. We were in a relationship. We had our baby. And now, because he sits up and talks to his family, now he feels like that is not his child. Since the day my daughter was born, because she was light-skinned with gray eyes, that was not his child because I'm too dark to have a light-skinned baby. Mr. Jackson, she said you were in a five-year relationship. Is that true? No, ma'am. So, how, what were we doing, Miko? What were you doing? Huh? You know, she was like my side woman. Your side woman? She was your side woman. Miko, you gonna stand so her alive? So, it's your testimony. You weren't in a relationship at all. I mean, we had a relationship, but it wasn't serious. You know, we, we was just, you know... You left your <laughs> ex to come be with me. How was we not it in a was, relationship? It was, it was more of, you know, she had great sex. Uh, oh, I put it on him and he could never leave. I mean, it, it, mm. it happens like that, you mm. know, Yon, it happens like that, you know. I went to the doctor because Two I had later. a cyst ruptured in my stomach, so I had to go to the hospital because I was very sick. He went with me, but he was my side piece, right? But he took me and went with me to the hospital. <laughs> So, I was getting a lot of tests ran and th things done to me. They was telling me, no, I wasn't pregnant at the time because I had polyps. So, the nurse explained that it was really hard for me to get pregnant and my chances was very slim. But at the time, I had already gotten off of birth control and was uh, trying to have a baby with him. So, we had sex at the hospital that same night. <laughs> and then... At the hospital? And then... While you were there for the polyps? Yeah, so after they, you know, got me together and got my body together, yeah, believe me, it wasn't that... Negative, so. you know. You just decided, I don't want to hurt this young woman's feelings, <clears throat> and I'd rather just not take the DNA test today, not get the answer as it relates to the paternity of Micaiah, and go back home to Miss Sales to only have sex with her and continue <laughs> to devalue her no, yeah, for I, another was, two years. Like I said, uh, on certain ends, it was about the sex, but, you know, later on in life, you know, I got closer to the daughter, closer to her daughter, so I didn't want to find it out if at the time. I just didn't want to find it out. And I seen her break down, so it really made me like, ah, I could be tripping. Sounds like you did care about Miss Sales. I cared about a little bit, but not too much. <laughs> Mrs. Matson, you say you are here today because you are determined to prove to your husband, Mr. Matson, that your six-month-old daughter is his biological child. You claim that he is trying to abandon your daughter and has a track record of doing so with other children. Yes, ma'am. Now, Mr. Matson, you claim Mrs. Matson has been having affairs with other men throughout your marriage. Yes, Your Honor. You believe you have every reason to doubt paternity today. Yes. How did you all meet? How did this begin, this relationship? He came into the casino that I was working in. I was a 21 dealer. He came in, sat down at my table on his wedding night. Okay, I'm almost afraid to thing... ask what happens from there. What was the first thing I said to you? You asked me if I... Would like to be my next ex-wife. Yep. Is that what you said, Mr. Yes, Madsen? Your Honor, it is. And then what happened from there? Uh, we had our ups and downs. Uh, ups and downs? Two years, two years <laughs> after that, we got married. But he, when he married me, he was still married to her. What? So you claim. Um, that would be what we would call in the Bigamy. court... Illegal. So, wait a minute. She even um, has let's start ice. off. Let's start off with the night that you were working at Taco Bell, and you went to a baby shower. I call you all night long. You come home and you go, "Oh, they threw my phone into a, a pool." You know what? what kind I, of... I was not at a baby shower. I told him I was at a baby shower because Where were you? because he, I knew he wouldn't let me do anything. I was actually at a bar having a few beers, playing pool because you know how much I love pool. Yeah, yeah I, I got okay. drunk and I attacked him because that's the only way I can get sex from him. <laughs> It's coming home, getting drunk and coming home and... Babe, if you looked like that every night, I'd give it to you every night. 
Tell me what you look like on a daily on a date. Do you put Judy, makeup I on? I can walk around naked in front of you. You don't give me a second glance. Well, if you look like that, let's try it. Not in this courtroom, please. <laughs> Have you ever cheated on him? One time, yes, I did. Because, because the owner, of the, the owner of the company that we was working for died. His wife was taking his her husband's uh, death very hard. It was all about her and this company. He never came home. He was working all you the time. A tow truck. Half the time he was with her. It became where the, everyone thought that they were married and not us. Okay, let's so, back yeah, up. Here. I did go so out and find someone. Let's back did up. Did that lead to Your you Honor? cheating with someone else? I like that. Because I had women. been done with him. I was done. I was trying to leave him. He's got no backbone. I would have gave no you a flight ticket to get the hell out of here. Oh, I'm sorry, Your Honor. <laughs>